But I had to leave behind what I was good at to find what I was best at. I think that's harder than leaving behind stuff where, damn, this isn't just working. I'm not good. And and so I think that's the challenge for every achiever, somebody that's going to reach the potential. I mean, we're dealing with gifted, talented people here, and they're usually pretty proficient at a lot of different levels. And the danger is they get stuck in a job or in a career where they're good enough to please everybody around them, but they know in their heart they were made for more. And that's the challenge. You've got to say no to the applause you're getting at one level so that you can hear the applause of your own heart by fulfilling what you were called to. Hmm. I'm just kind of letting that soak in. How can somebody fulfill their destiny if they feel like what they're already gaining some applause for it, but they know that yeah. they need to have faith to leave it behind Yeah. in a good way, not just dump it off? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, I think you have to know your own heart. I think one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is self-awareness, where you know when you're living out the fullness of who you're called to be, who you were born to be, and you also know when you're kind of living at 60, 70 percent. And again, you know, there's some people that what they produce at 60, 70 percent is enough to get the applause of the people around. Mm. But again, if they're, if they're going to really accomplish all that God has put in their heart to accomplish, then self-awareness is really important. They have to know that there's more for them. And there's always an element of risk uh, involved when you leave behind that which is comfortable, that which is safe. But somebody said to me once, faith is actually spelled R-I-S-K. There's no faith without risk. And really, there's no risk without faith. Because when you jump out, you got to trust that God's given you what you need for each new level and that he will be faithful, and that you have everything you need for the life he's called you to live. That could be really challenging. I'm sure everyone listening is nodding, saying, yep, that's pretty hard to do sometimes when the bills are coming in, the kids screaming in the back of the car, whatever it is. In addition to that, I would add, it's helpful to have a few faithful friends who know you and are true enough to you that they will speak what is real, and not just what you want to hear. Yes. Um, and, and nobody ever has a lot of those, but there's usually a few, one or two, that you know you can trust. And uh, they're the kind of people, they're, they're going to tell you what they see and what they really believe about you. And sometimes it gives you a perspective that even our best self-awareness desperately needs. Yeah. Because uh, mm. I think we all see through a glass dimly, mm. uh, not only in regards to heaven, but in regards to our own identity and who we are. So we need some people around us we trust. Powerful. It was probably a year and a half to two years ago that I realized that I'd been looking at the world through a broken lens and that my reality is not the reality of the world. Every every single person, whether we're watching the same exact movie, they're going to see it and experience it in a different way, depending on their background and everything that they've been through. In your message, fulfilling our destiny, you were mentioning how playing small thinking small and limited and not wanting or yeah not wanting to risk fulfilling our destiny due to maybe a lack of faith or even the presence of fear a lot of that is rooted in shame uh mm-hmm. and and a lot of that shame is due to false accusations where mm-hmm. the goal of those false accusations and consistent shame is to keep us from playing big and living out our destinies i would love for your thoughts on that and and why it is so important to be consistently developing self-awareness, especially in, you know, 20s and 30s. Well, you know, shame, shame's a huge topic and there's a lot coming out about it. But the simplest definition I've ever heard is shame is believing there's something wrong with you that's not wrong with everybody else. Mm. And I, I think the best thing we can do mm. is just be honest about who we are. And when we do that, when leaders do that, When we see vulnerability as a strength, not a weakness, it not only sets us free to be real, to be honest, to be vulnerable, but it sets other people free. You know, I I remember a guy, uh, he was a philosophy professor, and he came to me shortly after I moved to New York and I was teaching and our department was growing like crazy. We're up around 100 students in this department. And this philosophy professor came to me and he said, uh, you know, Walborn, The reason what you're doing is working is that you are so screwed up 
but God uses you. And all these kids and all these students go, hey, if God can use that guy, yeah. maybe he can use me. And I laughed and we laughed together because he was dead on. Um, the reality is we're all screwed up. We all have issues. We all have weaknesses. We all have fears. And if we can suddenly say, okay, the emperor has no clothes and I have no clothes and we're all in this together, suddenly so, it frees people to be real yeah. instead of religious. Yeah. And that's where real freedom begins. Yes. Yes. What you just heard was a micro clip from episode 51. You can hear the full episode if you scroll back to episode 51. Thank you for listening. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I'm really excited that you're here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get a free episode sent to your phone every single week. If you want to help with Heart Healthy Hustle, you can jump over to the scroll down and submit a review. This really helps the podcast grow and helps us to reach even more people who need this. Godspeed. Congratulations on making it to the end of this episode. What about this episode stood out to you? Next, I need your help sharing this show. I want this podcast to impact and reach 6,000 people per episode by August 31st, 2019. And I want us to reach 15,000 people per month by March 29th, 2020. Have you been enjoying multiple episodes of the Heart Healthy Hustle? I'm thrilled to share with you an exclusive invitation to join our new Facebook community. To get to know other Heart Healthy Hustlers, simply go to thehearthealthyhustle.com forward slash Facebook, where you can expect to see different members of our community being featured weekly in Facebook Live calls. I appreciate all of your love and support, and I will see you in the next episode. As always, be generous on every occasion. There is a story for you, and live wide open. Wide open.